So I want to talk a little bit about the mutual legal assistance treaties now. Um, we know that very often requests for a user's data involve companies whose servers are outside of the country, in case, in case of Brazil, outside of Brazil, or who don't, who, which do not even have offices in Brazil. This adds another layer of complexity to these uh, issues, particularly because uh, they depend, they start to depend on uh, international cooperation frameworks to become more operable. Um, the legal, the MLATs are kind of at the heart of these frameworks. Um, but law enforcement authorities have been very vocal about the weaknesses of this model of working with the MLATs. They're usually very slow, bureaucratic, inefficient, and, um, but they're still out there. So I wanted to ask in your view, what kind of reforms do you think are important uh, to make the MLATs work better as an alternative for law enforcement to have access to the... So I think there are, there are two steps to this. Um, in Access Now, my colleague Joe Mitnick is about to, to put forward our proposal, actually, imminently, um, on how we think MLATs should change. And the first thing is to change the MLATs themselves. Um, we think the MLAT system, by and large, is a human rights protective system. Um, it works to protect users, especially users in countries um, where there are fewer human rights protections. The problem is, is that it is slow and bureaucratic. Um, and it takes very hyper-local crime, um, you know, a crime that happens in Brazil with a Brazilian criminal and a Brazilian victim um, and everything is here and all of a sudden there's a vital piece of data for the investigation and it's located on a server in the United States and you have to go through this years long process to get access to that data. Um, that's really unfortunate. It's very frustrating, I know. Um, it's frustrating in Brazil and in other countries as well. Um, I think we need to be looking at jurisdiction and jurisdictional issues and make sure that we um, are exerting jurisdiction in the right places. We need to be providing more funding for MLATs. We need to be providing more training um, for people to go through the MLAT process. These are just a few of the things that you need to um, fix in the basic MLAT model while still protecting human rights. Um, you can't sacrifice human rights at the altar of efficiency. Um, now that said, one of the things that is also being proposed um, is the ability for countries to enter into agreements where they could bypass the MLAT system and go directly to the companies in certain jurisdictions. Um, there is right now a legal proposal to change the law in the United States to allow for these type of agreements because they couldn't happen under current law. Um, the problems are, are many with the current proposal. Now we think that the idea of this might be very positive. It might alleviate some of the pressure on the system so that some countries that protect human rights can get more direct access, um, which means that other countries that maybe don't qualify would have a more efficient process because some of that um, backlog would be let up. Um, but A, it does not actually um, prevent countries from implementing bad laws for human rights, things like um, data localization, mandatory data localization, which is bad for human rights. It has been a proposal to bypass the MLAT system. It doesn't prevent that from being in place, which means it's not solving some of the underlying problems. Um, it doesn't include MLAT reform. So you're not, again, solving this underlying problem by providing for the greater efficiency of the process. And it doesn't adequately protect human rights. Um, one of the countries being looked at for an initial agreement is the United Kingdom. Um, the UK just passed one of the most invasive surveillance laws in the world um, last year, the um, Investigatory Powers Bill, um, that allows for huge amounts of surveillance. And this proposal, if it would allow the UK to get access to the US um, companies, um, you can imagine that it, it really is not adequately protecting rights. Um, so we think that we need to increase the standards, that if co governments want um, easier access, if they want to bypass this, they actually should show that they have greater protections for individuals. 
Um, and the, the other thing that I think is at the heart of this that isn't being discussed is that the proposal would allow for protections for Americans, and UK law by and large has some protections for UK citizens. Um, but this is, is not a proposal limited to just the two countries in the agreement. So if the UK wanted to go directly to a US company and get information about Brazilians, there are very few protections um, in place, which means it would undermine the human rights of users in every other country around the world, Brazil, Germany, um, Australia, Tunisia. Every user would have fewer rights because the UK would then be able to get greater access to their data. And I think that that is a huge hole in the system that needs to be plugged.